Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mover Ruins Movies. First one using the uh, podcast setup. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at the TV show for all mankind on Apple. We're actually just looking at two scenes. I'm sure there's more. I actually watched probably the first six to nine episodes, and then I didn't watch anything after that. So I think this is much later. So if you're not familiar, uh, it's about an alternate timeline where the Kami Russians make it to the moon first. So the uh, they send women to space, I think. Something like that. I don't know. But in this scene, some T-38s are dogfighting, which I happen to know about because I've done a lot of dogfighting in T-38s recently because I'm a T-38A pilot, just like what these aircraft are. There's also another scene. Uh, so the first one was sent to me. This one, the second one is actually something I found in the YouTube rabbit hole because I looked at the very next video and... Okay, so let's just get right to it. Uh, for all mankind, Mover Ruins Movies. Check this out, cheese dude. So let's take a look at For All Mankind. <sighs> By the way, um, if you haven't seen it, go Google this and look at it yourself. I'm going to stop as we go, so it's not going to play through. I don't do that. And I'm using the space bar because people complain. OK, first off, that's not a T-38. And if it is, it's different. Uh, so it's missing the back seat. Not that I'm, I would complain about that, but the single seat version of a T-38 is actually an F-5, which has leading edge root extensions. It's got um, uh, leading edge devices. It has bigger engines. It's got a radar. This has none of that. It just, they took out the seat and made it a single seat T-38, which defeats the purpose of the T in T-38 because it's a trainer that's single seat. Why? Why would you have that? But NASA does fly T-38, so that part is true. Ladder, ladder one zero. And we'll south of okay, the gear looks relatively correct. Um, mask is really old. So, yeah, I mean, for this time frame, I guess this is like the 60s. That would work. That is a parachute and that is a the white straps or the T-38 harness. So uh, I'll give him that. The seat looks relatively correct. Right. Shoot's going to be a major problem. Fuel is always a major problem in the T-38. What's the deal? Just a little detour. I thought we'd see if you got any stones left. Uh oh. So that's a real, uh, looks like a low chart for the uh, Victor routes. So, I mean, we'd probably be fine with the high chart, but yeah, sure. You got a map. That's the right area. At least they tried. Flying in dogfight territory, son. Dogfight territory. So that's true. Whiskey 147. I mean, these are all real concepts, but I don't know about your flying in dogfight territory. It would just be scheduled airspace. So we'd be like, hey, we've got Whiskey 147 from 1300 to 1500. Oh, okay, we're going to be in the airspace. If there's other flights, we'll break it up and then go dogfight. No big deal. Oh, you bastard. Okay, I'm going to kick your ass. Fight's on, buddy. Yes. 100% correct. That is the only way to start a dogfight is by saying fight's on, buddy, and flipping the other guy off. I do that every time. Okay, right there, they're doing the fat lady's ass. So turning opposite direction from each other. That could be a good... I mean, I guess with the radius of the T-38, because it's not a very high-performing aircraft as far as turn radius goes, I guess if you did the fat lady's ass turned around, the problem would be because you're turning away, staying visual. So what we usually do, and if you haven't seen the uh, debrief on our DCS dogfight with me and Gonky, go check that out. But what we usually do is call butterfly sets. So we're line abreast, not fingertip like that, but line abreast, three, two, one, or sorry, uh, check away, butterfly, turn in, fights on. So you get your three mile separation and turn in a neutral merge. Or you start out line of rest and just turn in fights on. I have never done a fat lady's ass 
where we both turn the opposite direction and then try to pick each other up. It, it, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it's, it's non-standard. But anyway, T-38 is a sexy machine. Okay, so I don't know what happened there, but all of a sudden, oh boy, this could be editing. Again, I, I found this on YouTube, so I, I don't know if that's how they edit it or not, but this dude's now defensive and the other dude's offensive. So they showed none of how you got to that point. Okay, well, so no, um, the T-38A does not have a HUD. The T-38C has a HUD. Uh, it doesn't have a radar. Doesn't have, neither jet has a uh, captive carry AIM-9, which would give you a seeker and a tone. So I don't know, maybe in the alternate timeline, they've got better technology and simulate it, but without a radar, like even the 38C won't do this. Without a radar without any kind of targeting ability, this is not happening. So uh, looking at the HUD though, this actually looks like the T-38C HUD. And the reason I say that is because this course arrow or right here, that's a course uh, and that's supposed to be your bingo, although that's looks like it says 28,000 pounds, uh, but that's your, your bingo bug. So that looks relatively similar to a T-38. The alpha is at 1.08, so he's, I'm guessing stalled uh, at 355 knots, which is a little unusual. Mach 0.7 would probably make sense about that altitude, and he's pulling 2. Point whatever G's, 2.8, can't see, 2.69. So they tried. This would be, what this looks like is a T-38C symbology, because that looks like the gun cross or the gun pipper, and that looks like, the because the T-38C does have a little AIM-9 papa thing you can slew around, but... I don't think that's what's happening here. So it looks like some technical advisor was like, yeah, let's use a T-38C. Just for clarification, no version of the NASA T-38 that I'm aware of has a HUD, even today. I think they just use glass cockpits. I don't think they've ever put a HUD in them. Bastard. Ain't gonna save you, though. Check this out, cheese dude. Uh, no. I don't know what else to say. Like, if anybody believes that, the answer is no. Like, not only did you get into a flat vertical spin headed out to sea, but like even a jet that has thrust vectoring and canards and high alpha, it wouldn't look like that anyway. And oh, by the way, he did it and it didn't do anything. Like, it just flipped and the guy's still behind him. So congratulations, Fox 2. Yeah, now he that dude has departed control flight. Like I'd be yelling at him, going, "Hey, dude, you're below fifteen thousand feet, eject," because that's the uncontrolled bailout altitude for that parachute. So, yeah, no. And uh, just right here, little note: take it out of standby, buddy. That's all. His altimeter's in standby, not the primary mode. <laughs> uh, no, there you but okay. Are. How did you see that come? Like the jet's not even capable of doing that. How did you? Uh, okay, whatever. Just to clarify, because people are going to complain, like, "Oh, you're not T thirty eight's not a very maneuverable fighter." I mean, it's it's like the Century Series version, you know. I mean, couple G's, five, six G's, you know, seven G max. Uh, it it's got a little stubby wing that doesn't have any leading edge devices. It doesn't have anything that can do stuff like that. So I'm gonna say a uh, hard no on that one and we'll continue. So now they're down to 14,000 feet, 300 knots, which if you had done all of that stuff to wind up behind them, you'd be a lot slower than 300 knots, like probably 180, maybe slower than that. But they're in burn, or whatever. Pippers on, Fox 2, that's... Yeah, so he calls Fox 2. I don't know if he hits the pickle button or the trigger. You'd hit the pickle button. Unless you're in a Navy jet, then you hit the trigger. But again, you have nothing on... You have no Fox 2. A Fox 2 is a heater, heat-seeking missile, but he doesn't have anything to simulate that. So I'm not sure where he's going with that. Oh, she wrote, buddy. <laughs> ah, jeez. They call that a clean kill. They call that dumb luck, Gordo. We call that a clean kill. <sighs> Just... Make it too that, I believe. I mean, 
after everything that he's just gone through, I would not be surprised if he had a compressor stall, um, probably over G'd the jet, probably broke a couple things. So the fact that something's going wrong here, probably. Uh, it's interesting, though, that is not a flat. This almost look maybe this. I don't know what what aircraft this is supposed to be, but that is not a T-38 flap indicator. Because the T-38 flap indicator has zero, 60 and 100. It's a percent of the flaps. But this part is correct as far as this is where the fuel shutoff would be. That is not where the engine firelight would be, though. So and but there is a fast direct on that side. So I don't know what cockpit this is. I mean, that's where the engine start is. Maybe an F5. See that you've got a red light too, dude. You you got something going on with yours. Oh, you got flames under your left engine. Oh shit! Man. You better get. Okay. Kind of correct. Uh, sir, a bold face applies. Throttle idle. Throttle off. The firelight remains on. If fires confirmed, eject. That's T38A. So throttle idle. Firelight stays on. Throttle off. The light stays on. If the light still stays on, then you go fuel shut off. And then if the fire is still confirmed, you jump out. So that's the right place for a fuel shut off valve. So, I mean, they got that ish, right? I mean, this, this part actually looks reasonable. Get out and walk, buddy. That actually, that handle, isn't that the parachute handle? Because that's, that handle doesn't exist in a T-38A. So that they might've been using like an F5 version. I don't know. I have. I haven't seen all the variant variants of the F5 cockpit, so I'm not sure. That's correct. Ejection handles are on the side. He put his head down before ejection, so he broke his neck. Good job. Didn't really give it a whole lot of time to troubleshoot. I'm not sure you'd have this much time between seat separation, though. I've never jumped out of a T-38, so I don't know. Maybe temporal distortion, like Stinky talked about in our interview. There you go. And this is how I ended up down the rabbit hole of, for all mankind, flying T-38 A to space. Because it's the very next video. No G-suit. I don't know if NASA people fly with Jesus or not, but that's the parachute. That's correct. There's no jet out there. I don't know where she's Alan going. Cops, NASA Copy Molly, hold one. Same thing, wrong T-38, or single seat version of a T-38, so not a T-38. Request you open box, whiskey 147. She said open box. Just gonna go with, so to speak, on that one. Charlie. NASA 964 Elgin Ops, you got it, Molly. Box Whiskey 147 Charlie is open. Come on, let's see what you. What did they say? Elgin Ops? Box Whiskey 147 Charlie 64 Elgin Ops, you got it. Seven Charlie. NASA 964 Elgin Ops, you got it, Molly. Elgin Ops? Ellington? I don't know. Box Whiskey 147 Charlie is open. Okay, so it's not called a box, so to speak. We don't say box container maybe but it's just warning area whiskey 174 and she has man hands like some hardcore <laughs> god look at her hands <laughs> oh my god alternate timeline hands are scary you think that was a dude's hand come on let's see what you got uh, what are we doing give me more okay 15,000. That's a really old school altimeter. That's not what they look like on ours. No. No. The aircraft ceiling is 50,000 feet. If you get above, like you got a real high probability of compressor stall in that 40 to 50, actually above 30. Above 30, any throttle modulation, you can compressor stall the engine, which means it's not getting the airflow over the blades um you get a, a pop buzz bang uh, out in the kind of a fireball sometimes either on the front or the back but uh service ceiling is uh, fifty thousand feet it's not going above that and you wouldn't want to go above that uh because you get into the was it sixty thousand armstrong line where 
you're not pressurized uh, to that altitude because it's 8,000 feet up to 24,000 feet as what your cabin altitudes read, and then it's a delta pressure. The T-38 pressurization is not going to keep up above 60,000 feet. So she needs to be in a pressure suit. Uh, otherwise, she's going to get the bends. whole lot of bad things are going to happen to her in this jet, uh, besides the fact that it's not going to do it. Uh, does she have Tourette's? Like, what is she yelling? Okay, this is just basic physics, but where you see space, the edge of space is like 300,000 feet, not 60,000 feet. I've been up at 50, and you can see the curvature of the Earth, but you can't see space. You just see, at, you know, it's just, just now you can see more curvature of the Earth. That's it. What is wrong with you? What? No, 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 no. Do they not have, like, no. Who are the advisors on these shows? Yep, well, that part's right. You did just compressor stall both engines. I'll give you that. Is that a parachute handle? Like, what? what is this handle supposed to be? So, this actually might be an F5 cockpit. I don't know. None of this looks right. Maybe that's how the futuristic T-38 looks. We're on trainer, trainer. Maybe she is hypoxic. Maybe this is all the blood boiling because she's so high without a pressure suit. But she's not in space. Like, it does not go night to dark. There is no scenario where a T-38 can do this. None. Not even... I mean, maybe if you strapped a rocket to it. I mean, it would rip apart. But maybe if you strapped a rocket to it? Maybe. On its own power? No. Ironically, this part actually is correct because to recover from a compressor stall, you know, you go idle, hit the uh, start starter starter buttons. However, when you go into burner, it starts the igniters. So you could actually relight the engines by going to burner. So if it worked, then you're in burner. Eh, give them that one. That's not how. Nine six four is in ops. You okay there, Molly? Your altitude just dropped fifteen thousand feet. Uh, no. Unless there's somebody watching Tac View, I don't think anybody would have been monitoring her in the whiskeys and the warnings. Roger that. Ellington ops. I'm good. Yeah, it's Ellington. That's right. So the other asshole was saying it wrong. She got it right. The dude who's at Ellington can't even say the name of his own base. I don't, this I wouldn't. Anyway. So there you go. Um, T-38 dogfighting and a T-38 going to space. I have no words. Nothing. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.